Steve Flo under center. Straight drop. Looking for the corner route. Gets lit up. And it's Levi Helbling. Touchdown Knights. Touchdown Knights. What a play from Levi Helbling. Steeple gets lit up on the play, but it doesn't matter. 29 yards. Touchdown Knights. That was the godfather looking down the gun barrel, as they like to say. The defenders in his face, arms up. And that throw could not have been more picture perfect from Stiefel to Helbling. Stretching it out there, Helbling running that corner route. The defender had good coverage. He was all over Helbling, but there's no defense for a perfect pass. And that's what that was. Helbling makes the grab. The defender over pursues, runs out of bounds, and Helbling is into the end zone, and the Knights are ahead. Marcus Williams looking to tag on the extra point. And he does. What a play for the Wartburg offense. They go back on top for this one, 24 to 21. We're going to take a look at the replay. And you're just going to see Levi Helbing with a heck of a corner out here. Goes up, he's out. Stiefel gets lit up, and Helbing tiptoes the sideline. And that was the situation, the cornerback going for the ball, trying to tip it away. This is and Helbling's free and clear into the end zone. And now we're going to stay here as the teams are getting lined up for the kickoff. 24-21 nights and exactly what the doctor ordered on offense. And now it's the defense's turn. Can they come back and make a stand? Because Kohawk is three of three in the second half on their possessions. Three possessions, three touchdowns. Kohawk has, or the, excuse me, Co has had good field position here, but uh, they've just been moving the ball so easily. It's up to Warburg to come back and show that their defense still is one of the top in the conference. Now, what do you, now you're exactly right. They gotta do something, but what is that something? They need to get some pressure on Boyle. He can't stand back there and be able to throw. But the problem with that is that the more pressure you put on him, suddenly he escapes it, and he's downfield for 25 yards. So the D-line needs to needs to play their hearts out. It's It's got to be up to the D-line to pressure him and bring him down when he's in their sights. Trevor Finchant kick gets to the 15. Keaton Jurgens on the return. And he'll be sliced down at the 33-yard line. And that's where Boyle and the offense will try to get back into this one. 24-21 in favor of the Knights. 11.42 to play in the ballgame. Knights come out with that tough defensive front. Ben Bento and Ross Naylor, the defensive tackles. And also we look for a big play. We haven't seen Matt Cheddar. We haven't said his name much today. He's a defensive end. He's a sack master. And that's been a byproduct of Boyle. Every time Cheddar gets in the backfield, Boyle's able to escape the pressure. Boyle drops back. He's got a man over the middle. Incomplete. Oh, but a deep, deep throw for the pass interference. That came all the way from the back judge. And an injury on the field. We're going to step aside for this interview. We'll be back in one minute. You're watching Wartburg Football on Wartburg Television. <laughs> Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Anyone can see it. Family? Friends, anyone, remember, think before you post. Yeah, just playing a pickup game. Haven't been an athlete here for years, and not even an athlete now, and it worked out really, really well. Got some good training, and it's getting healed up pretty good. I come over and provide physical therapy services here on campus. Right on campus, right easy to get to. Uh, Pretty good guys to come here and work with. Uh, we are open uh, to serving uh, student athletes, general students, and any faculty and staff members on campus. Welcome back, Taylor, um Taylor Umlin with Kyle Pomolia. And now it's the Cohawks with a second and six after the pass interference call. And on the reverse, he's got some room to work. And there's some laundry on the field. That was like probably going to be a holding be a, call. Either a holding call or a block in the back. Warburg had some penetration, and it looked like a Matt Cheddar was going to be able to make the stop way in the backfield. Jared Cooner was the ball carrier. Second and six as of right now. And that is going to be a holding call. I think it's a block in the back, actually. Or was it? It looked like a block in the back on Co. You're right. 
I am right. Over the PA announcer. I tend to do that. Yeah, for the first time today, out of boy. <laughs> <laughs> 11 minutes to play in the ball game. And that's going to back up the Cohawks to about a second. And what they didn't want to get into. <laughs> second and 17 after the, after the block in the back. This will be an interesting series now because Coe's passes, while they've had great success in the second half, haven't been going for a whole lot of distance. They've been more dump-offs and check-downs. So we'll see if they're able to pick up a large amount of yardage in just a couple plays. Under 11 minutes to play in the game. Boyle in the gun. Matt Barn to the near side. Had a lot of catches today. And that one's going to be tossed out to the flats. Joel Langenberg on the reception, picks up, gets back to the original line of scrimmage at the 41-yard line. Maybe fought his way up to the 42. Now it's going to be third and nine. Big third down here, and a good play for Coe on second down because third and 16, you don't have much shot at converting, but a third and nine is attainable while difficult. So a big third down here. The crowd is on their feet. Five wide receivers set. Cheddar looking to get a, get a head start, backs up. Now Boyle's going to scramble. Nothing there. He's hit as he throws. And the Cohawks are going to have to punt. That was great pressure by number 55, Jason Shupp. He knocked Boyle to the ground right as he was letting go. Forced him into kind of a weird sidearm delivery because Boyle had an open receiver at right about the first down marker. So great pressure by the defense because that was probably going to be a first down. What a stand there from the Woodbridge offense, or Woodbridge defense gets a little help on the back, block at the back call. But now they're going to get the ball back and look to melt that clock a little bit. Look to extend the lead. Hike it over his head. Looks like the Knights are bringing some pressure. They do right up the gut, almost get there. And now this one's going to bounce at the 30. Van Hole's going to collect it and make a charge. Well, I'm surprised he fielded that one. One of those returns where he fielded it, not really to gain yards, but to prevent the ball from rolling all the way back into the depths of his own end zone. So now it's going to be first and 10 Knights at the 27-yard line. 10 minutes to play. I'd really like to see the Knights roll in about six sec or six minutes off here. <laughs> and that's what's uh, that's that's what's nice about having a back like Connor Dahlstrom on your team. He's a bruising runner, a fourth down guy, and a guy with sure hands. So in the fourth quarter, when you're trying to protect a lead, you can trust him to hang on to the football. For right now, it'll be Reese Thompson. A little discussion going on between the officials. But we got to put this one on the back of the offensive line for the rest of this drive. They are, they are the ones who are going to decide who wins this ball game. Helbling to the near side. Alcee Smith in the slot and Kurt Haruska to the far side. And you're going to give it to Thompson. Cut back. Find his way across the 35 up to the 38. Excuse me, up to the 30, up to the 34. Now it's going to be second and five. And that's what you see, like to see from your running backs is them deliver the blow to the linebackers. You know, the linebacker brings you down, but it's one of those situations where he kind of has to bear hug him and just kind of fall down with him. And you gain a couple extra yards. And you get yards. a couple, two or three yards extra when you make a tackle like that. Same formation, Alex Covington, the fullback. A thankless job, but doing it well. Stiefel checks it at the line, now getting new signals from the sideline. Getting some pressure flushed out as Alcee Smith, there's his first catch of the day, and a big one at that. Out at the 40 yard line, first down Knights. Well, we've been talking about Smith running great routes throughout the day, he did it again there, runs about a six yard out route, and he's wide open. Stiefel has been looking for him, but he's been on the other side of the field, or just kind of some extenuating circumstances where Smith hasn't been able to get the ball in his hands, because he can do something with it when he gets it. He's a little like Ruffridge in that regard. A lot of speed. Yep. That's going to be Haruskin and Smith to this side. They're going to give it to Thompson off the right side, trying off the uh, trap play. And he's going to get up to the 45. Now a second and five in this offense, like rolling once again. Similar to what we saw in the first quarter. It's really been, it's been a strange game because Warford dominated the first quarter and then really didn't score at all in the second. Coe dominated the third and now Warford's coming back with the fourth. And it's been all about the running game for Warburg. We saw them when they were able to have success in the first quarter. It's their running game that's setting up the pass. And that's again the case here. 8.21 left to play in the ball game. 
again, it's Thompson. He gets met and stuck, but still able to fall forward for a couple of yards. And it's very lucky he did. This went from a third and, to a third and three, and it could have been a third and five. That was a good play by the linebacker there. I think it was uh, number 23. Not sure of his name, but he made a nice play to hang on. Kind of like a junior eye tackle, kind of hanging on to Thompson's foot and not letting go. But a good play, because Thompson had a first down regardless. Or excuse me, not regardless. He had a first down if he hadn't hung on. That was Jake Lauer, the weak side linebacker, who had to hang on there. Under eight minutes to play in the ball game. Third and three, big play, and there's some movement. That comes from the right side of the line. I believe it was the right guard who moved. And that's going to be Dylan Boyd, the sophomore, and that backs him up now to a third and eight. That, that's a tough one. Penalties like that are just just back-breaking when you're trying to sustain a drive. The slightest of twitch there, and everybody yeah. saw it. 7.37 left to play in the ball game. Third and eight now. Look for the wide receivers to come up big for a play here. Levi Helwing has been big all day long. I wouldn't look past Kurt Haruska, though. He's been Stiefel's most reliable target today, and a guy who runs great routes and is able to get open despite not having blazing speed. Off the play action, looking that way, he's got Haruska and he overthrows him. Haruska tried to settle, tried to find a spot in that zone, and Stiefel tried to throw a little bit too hard. The free safety, Austin Lloyd there on the coverage, and uh, I think he was lucky that that pass was deemed uncatchable because he kind of had a push in the back. He gave Haruska a bump, and if that pass had been catchable, I think he might have seen some laundry on the field, Lloyd getting called for pass interference. Well, that takes the clock to 7-10, stops it there with the incomplete pass, and now it's going to be Robbie Salmon back to punt. Keaton Jurgens back to receive. Good snap and good leg as this one turns over, forcing him all the way back to the five-yard line where he drops it. And now that Warford defense sticks him, and he's going to be down at the four-yard line. And that's why Robbie Salmon's an All-American. And that's why Robbie Salmon is an All-American is exactly right. We've tried to field those punts, Taylor, and <laughs> it is not easy. He kicks them high, he kicks them far, lots of spin on him. It is not easy to catch those punts, especially because going back like that, it's like yeah. a center fielder trying to make a catch against the wall in the outfield. He's going, driving him way back into his own end zone. What a punt by Robbie Salmon. Well, this, now the Cohawks with 96 yards in front of him. Boyle in the gun, and a fumble on the shotgun snap. Boyle spins away, and he's able to fall forward for a gain of a yard. And the wheels are coming off here for the Cohawks. Coe's been, been playing with fire here. It's a couple fumbles back to back, and uh, if they fumble here and turn it over right five yards from their own goal line, they can almost kiss this game goodbye. 6.36 left to play in the ball game. You hear those Knights fans getting a little riled up. Play action, looking deep, he's got his man! Yes, he does. Good pitch and catch there to Jared Cooner as they able to beat him on the post route. And that was a, a touchdown saving tackle by Josh Vanderhall. He misses that, that is six points for Coe and suddenly they're the ones with all the momentum and Warburg's gotta come back now, and Very score. quickly back the other way comes the running back Thompson. And he gets up to the 39 yard line. And you're exactly right there, Kyle. A touchdown saving tackle because there was nobody else around. Nope, there were uh, no one within really 20 yards of him. It was just Vanden Hall and Cooner on an island. And Vanden Hall's been doing a good job on Cooner all game, but it's just one thing Cooner's a little too talented and big to not be heard from at all in the game. Trips to the near side. He sends his man in motion. He goes back up the middle of the Thompson, but he's going to be met and stuck by the defensive line. Ross Naylor with the tackle. 5.36 and counting, and that clock begins to come effect. Against the zone read, Warburg's defense just seems to get more and more effective the more they see of it. Against Gustavus, we saw him struggle in the first half, but rebound big time in the second. Third and six. Deep drop. Nothing there. Fires away. Oh, he got his man. And Vandenhol tries to make the tackle, and he'd be dragged out of bounds by Garrett McGrain. 